He is. I mean, myself and uh, the Taoiseach would have probably been in the Trinity around the same time. Really? But we view this country very differently, to a very different prism. So, and that's a socio-economic prism I'm talking about. So he experienced this country in a very different way growing up than I experienced it. So he views that world through that prism. And I don't forget, and I won't forget what he did before he became Taoiseach. He essentially enacted this informant line for a problem that didn't really seem to be a problem. And everybody was saying, well, is this really the best way you can spend your money? And the amount of money, you know, that is basically being siphoned out of the country through corruption, the amount of people that were taken off their tracker mortgages, the amount of corruption that is endemic and systemic in the various different, uh, uh, you know, structures that we have. There's no phone line to rat out bankers. There's no phone line to rat out corruption at all the various different levels. And he did that for one reason. He did it to make political capital and political gain because he wanted to become the leader of his party. Yeah. And he knew that that would play well to his voting base and the tough right-wing conservative neoliberals. So that's who, not who, what a leader does. Hold on a second. Well, that's not what a leader it, it does. What that's what a, a divider does. Well, that's what a leader does if he wants to get elected, a party who reflects what he believes in. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. You know what I mean? But like, oh, no, no, it's I'm only, not defending yeah, I'm just I know, I know, yeah, his no, Sorry, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. No, Listen, I'm all for hearing what you have to yeah, say, yeah. but I'm just saying he would say that. Well, look, you know, it's, it's this kind of thing of the old Roman kind of thing of divide and conquer, but it's not divide and conquer. It's divide and rule. Because if you can basically tell everybody at the bottom of the ladder that it's not the bankers, it's not the professional classes, it's not those people that essentially are trying to kick you out of your home or the vulture funds, it's the other guy, the bus driver, the guy in labour, the other guy that's in the same job as you are. Because the working classes compete for resources, and he knows that. And as long as you're looking at your neighbour and thinking that your neighbour is the one that's doing you out of it, you're not looking at the banker. And he knows that. And that's the canard of political thinking that they put out there, that anybody who is engaging with social services, anybody who's engaging with hospital services for free, they villainise them because they want you to be suspect of them because they have this political ideology that taxation is a form of theft and it's your taxes. And it's not people that are basically funneling them out of the country. It's this bloke in a tracksuit. But it wasn't blokes in tracksuits that were in the country. It was blokes in suits. And do you think that when you put that... <laughs> there you are. So when you...